First things first, let's get the wheel off. The hub cap, or the center cap I should say, you can pry off with a screwdriver or a pry bar. And then with a 22 millimeter socket, take off all six of your lug nuts. And remove the wheel. The first thing I wanna do is break free this banjo bolt that's right here. That's gonna help me take it off easier once the caliper's already off. So with an 11 millimeter wrench, break this free. Oh, that one's pretty tight. And then snug it back up just temporarily so it doesn't leak any fluid. On the back side, you'll see two T55 bolts. Remove both of those. Those are the sliders that hold the caliper onto the bracket. Okay, pull both of these out. Take the caliper and flip it up and out of your way. Remove your old pads. And with an 18 millimeter, remove the caliper bracket from the knuckle. Put on the new caliper bracket, and once it's mounted, we'll lubricate it and prepare it for the pads. Tighten these up and torque them to 129 foot-pounds. At this point, I like to put some grease right here on the bottom where the hardware goes, as well as on the top. You can do this when the caliper's off. Just make sure you don't get it on the rotor. And then I'll take a little bit of caliper grease and put it right inside here where the slider pin goes in. That's going to be like a reserve of grease for the uh, sliders. Now you can take your hardware. It's going to have one larger flat area and one smaller. Make sure you match those up. The smaller one is on the outside, the larger one's on the inside. So put those on here and just press it in all the way. Make sure it's seated. Do the same to the bottom. Perfect. Now you can take your brake pads and slide these on. Before I put my caliper on, I'm going to put just a little bit of grease on these three ears here. That's going to help the pads operate quietly and smoothly. And I'm also going to put it right on the outer ring of these pistons. That's going to do the same thing, but it also will prevent water from getting into the pistons. It's going to make a nice watertight seal up against the pad, and it's going to prevent these from rusting on the inside. What I'm going to do now is place my caliper up and over, make sure the boot doesn't get pinched. And then I'm going to use one of the sliders, put this in and just leave it there just to hold it in place. While that one's holding my caliper, I'm going to grease up the bottom slider. And I know this already has a little bit of grease on it, but that is nowhere near enough. Coat it in a nice layer of grease. And then you want to get some up right in that ridge there. That's where the boot seals up. And it's important to have grease there. Otherwise water can make its way in. All right. So now that one's done. Slide that one in and you can start the threads if you want. Now you can pull the top one out and do the same thing. Just coat it with grease and get it up in that ridge. Slide it in, start that one. Bottom them both out and then torque them to 80 foot pounds. Now here's where it can get a little bit messy if you're not quick. I'm gonna take this banjo bolt off and have it ready and just for the purpose of doing things faster. I'm going to use my impact and, and remove this. Fluid's going to start dripping. Perfect. Now that that caliper is empty, that can go get recycled. Now you'll notice that this bottom washer is basically stuck on there. And what I'm going to do to take it off is clamp a pair of locking pliers onto it. And once I've done that, I'm going to use my impact and try and drive it out of here. Take the old banjo bolt out. Next, take your new banjo bolt with one of the new crush washers, put it in, and take the other crush washer, put it in on the bottom, and then start it into the new caliper. Take your wrench, make it nice and snug. Basically what you want to do is just compress these uh, crush washers to make a seal. Okay, clean up your mess. 
Next, you would want to bleed the brakes, or at least this caliper. So take the cap off for the bleeder screw. Then with a 10 millimeter wrench, open up your, your bleeder screw. And with it open like this, just wait until a steady trickle of fluid comes out. That's when you can close it up and then perform a manual brake bleed. And what a manual brake bleed is, is first of all, check your master cylinder, make sure that's full. Then you have someone inside the vehicle stepping on the brake, pump up the brake pedal three, four times, and then have them hold pressure on it. With pressure being held, open this bleeder up, fluid will come out and air as well. Close it up, pump up the brake again, and then repeat this step three, four, five times, however much it takes in order to not have any air come out of this bleeder screw. Once that's done, you can put the wheel on and uh, go for a road test. But for now, let's wait for the fluid to trickle out. Okay, we have a steady trickle of fluid. Close this up, snug it, and now you can perform the manual brake bleed. Once you're done with the manual brake bleed, Clean up your area, make sure there's no brake fluid left over. Put on the little rubber boot that protects the bleeder, otherwise it can get clogged up over time. Oops, there's a little bit left in there. Go ahead and put the wheel on. Start on all of your lug nuts, bottom them out, and torque them to 140 foot-pounds. And of course, don't forget the center cap.